What's up guys, my name's Brandon and today Apple released iOS 18.1 Beta 2 to registered developers two weeks after the release of Beta 1. Now along with this release, we also got iPadOS 18.1 Beta 2 and macOS Sequoia 15.1 beta 2. Now we did also get the iOS 18.0 beta 6 update along with all of the other beta 6 updates today as well. But of course in this video we're talking all about iOS 18.1 and this new second beta. And just as a refresher, this is only available on the 15 Pro and 15 Pro Max. Anyway, as you can see the size here came in at just under a gigabyte and a half on my iPhone 15 Pro Max. So pretty large size going from beta 1 to beta 2. So let's go ahead and check out the new build number for this update. So if we head into our settings, go to general and then about 18.1, the new build number is 22B5023E. So we have an E at the end of the build number now. Beta 1 had a P at the end of the build number. And then if we go back and check out the modem firmware, that has also been updated. So it's now 2.16. 0.00. It was 2.15.01 in beta 1. All right, so now what's new here in iOS 18.1 beta 2? And the first thing is that we are now synced with iOS 18.0 and those betas. So if you're on iOS 18 beta 6, you're going to have the same features on iOS 18.1 beta 2. So of course it doesn't go vice versa because you don't have Apple intelligence on iOS 18.0. That's the big benefit of updating to 18.1 is that you get the Apple intelligence features. So anyways, we're synced with beta six now. So now we're not going to feel so far behind iOS 18.0. So as far as specific changes here with beta two compared to beta one, we have a slight change in our settings. If we go down to Apple intelligence and Siri, we now have a section for talk and type to Siri. So we have beta one here on the left and you can see that we do not have the talk and type to Siri. So that existed before the menu existed before it just was not in the main Apple intelligence and Siri section. So that has been moved. And if you go into there, you can see you do get the options for type to Siri, press side button for Siri, and of course how you want to trigger Siri. Now also with beta two, I noticed that the writing tools options pop up much more frequently than in beta one. So in beta one, sometimes you were not able to access the Apple intelligence features unless you selected the text and went over to writing tools. But now they pop up more frequently here in beta two when you're just simply typing. They pop up in the suggested you know text menu right here, the predictive text menu. So that seems to be better and the output seems to be a little bit quicker here as well. Now also Siri in general, especially the animation that goes around the screen seems to be a lot more, you know, fluid now and it doesn't have as many issues. In beta one, sometimes you wouldn't actually see the full animation. It would just kind of cut off and then you wouldn't know if you've actually activated Siri or not, but that is fixed in beta two and it seems like every time it works as intended, the animation there. Also in beta two, it's a lot harder to activate type to Siri. So this can be seen as a good thing or a bad thing. For me, it's a good thing because in beta one, I accidentally activated this so many times. So now in beta two, I've noticed, especially when going into applications and swiping back and forth in between applications, it's less finicky and it does not activate as easily anymore, which I see as a good thing. Also with iOS 18.1 beta two, we now have access to distraction control in Safari. This is the number one feature that made me regret updating to 18.1 instead of staying on the iOS 18.0 betas. So if you go into a web page and you tap on this icon right here in the address bar, you have a new option for hide distracting items. This works the same as what we saw in iOS 18 beta five. It's just now available on 18.1 beta two. So this allows you to hide elements on a web page and they do persist after a reload as long as the content inside of the element does not change. So you can hide ads, for example, on a web page, but when you reload the page, the ads will reappear. So this is more for hiding distracting items. Like if we don't want to see the header anymore for this website, we can hide that. We get the really cool animation. If you don't like seeing this section right here in a web page, you can hide that. If you go down and you see this little footer section, if you don't want to see more advertisements, you know, or, or more just advertising articles on that site, we can hide that 
as well and you tap on done and you no longer see those elements and if you refresh you can see that it will persist and we will not see those elements that we had previously and you get this little eye icon down here in the address bar and you can tap on that and you can show the hidden items at any time if you want so if you want to revert that you can do it as well also in the control center we have all the changes that we saw in beta 5 so pretty much all of the icon the glyph icons have been tweaked in some way or another so they're very faint and you have to really look at the two side by side to see the difference but you can see for example on the orientation lock the arrow is less opaque for example on the screen recording even you can see that the outer outline is thicker and less opaque and you can just go around and see several changes to these icons you can actually probably see it better if we go into this view right here so you can see some of the changes between beta 1 and beta 2 and again beta 2 it just has all of the beta 5 and the beta 6 features so if you're saying that some of these were there previously it's just because they were in 18.0 not in 18.1 and again that's the big reason that ios 18.1 felt so far behind is because they did not have the features that ios 18 beta 5 had i know it gets kind of confusing but anyways also new here in ios 18.1 beta 2 and also new in the beta 6 update for ios 18.0 is a standalone bluetooth connectivity toggle so if you tap on that you can now have a standalone bluetooth icon in your control center which is nice a lot of people have been requesting that for quite some time now also on the home screen if you go into jiggle mode and you tap on edit up in the top left hand corner we now have a new edit pages button so if you tap on that that will take you to the option where you can edit pages you could do that previously but you had to go into jiggle mode and then just tap on the icons down in the bottom the page dots down in the bottom so it's kind of hidden and now apple is making it a little bit more obvious that you can edit pages from this view we also have new app icons for the maps application and also for find my and if you had issues in carplay with the Waze and google maps applications those have both been fixed here with 18.1 beta 2 but perhaps the most important bug fix in 18.1 beta 2 is with our emojis and the recent emojis have finally been fixed so before in 18.1 beta 1 even if you used an emoji 100 times it would not show up in your recent emojis or your favorite emojis emojis here but now it works again in the music application we now have new instead of browse so we have the same glyph icon but the wording has been changed from browse to new and when you tap on it it now shows new up in the top left whereas before it just said browse the photos app has also been changed so before in ios 18.1 beta 1 you could swipe over on this section to go to different pinned collections that you chose but now in beta 2 it's been reverted back and it's now more like ios 17 where it's just a vertical ui it's just a vertical layout and you cannot swipe over anywhere so you have all these sections down here and it's more neatly organized in my opinion you can go down to the bottom here and go to customize and reorder so it now has new wording there and if you tap on that you can unselect or you know select or move around whatever you want to show up top so if i want my wallpaper suggestions to show up top i can go ahead and take this and put this up top if i want utilities to show up right below that i can do that as well and i'll deselect recent days and if you go out of there and then go up you can see that it's now in what I set it so it's now in the custom layout that I have set I also found it interesting that some people are seeing a much larger size for Apple intelligence on their device so if you go into your settings and go to general and then to iPhone storage and go down to the bottom and go to the iOS section and then you'll see Apple intelligence so mine remains at 2.63 gigabytes but some people are seeing that at 5 gigabytes or above so it's pretty interesting that we do have some fluctuation there and the size of Apple intelligence on our device and there's also several new splash screens to show what's new in some of the first party applications and we also have just all of the other iOS 18 beta 6 features in iOS 18.1 beta 2. also for those of you outside of the united states if you did have your region set to united states if you changed it to english united states you should be able to get access to the apple intelligence and siri section so i've seen a lot of people report that a lot of people reporting that they could join the wait list and everything like that so i'm not in the eu so i cannot confirm that myself but it seems like a lot of people were able to get in and sign up for the waitlist, even though they're not technically living in the United States.
AirPods. We also got a new AirPods Pro 2 beta firmware update. So the new build number for this third beta, I believe it is, is 7A5266C. So we went from a B to a C at the end of the build number. Now, as far as any of the other Apple intelligence features, those are not present here with beta two. So we do not have Genmoji. We don't have chat GPT support. We don't have the image playground. We don't have any of those new features. We don't have the mail categorization. So none of those features are here yet in beta two. Now, some of the things have been tweaked, like smart replies seem to show up more frequently in mail, but not in messages. So for example, if I go to reply to an email, you can see that right here, we have the option for I'm interested or I'm not interested. And the smart reply works up right away. And then we also get a follow up down here. So it says, will you sign the NDA? So it asks us a question that is asked in the original email. So I'm just going to go ahead and tap on yes, and it will choose to enter that in there as well. Now, if I put no, it will change that you can see, but I won't be able to sign an NDA. So you can go back and forth on that, or you can tap on the three dots and add in a custom phrase. So it seems like smart reply has definitely gotten better here with iOS 18.1 beta two, specifically in the mail application, which I'm glad to see because I actually use this more often than I thought I would. But as far as anything else related to Apple intelligence, it does not seem like there's anything major that's been tweaked here in beta two. I think really the big reason Apple pushed out this update was to just finally get it on track with the iOS 18.0 beta. So that way moving forward, it seems like we're going to have all the same features that the latest iOS 18.0 update has just in addition, we're going to get, you know, the AI features in addition to those changes. So so that makes sense. And that's why we really didn't see a ton new here in beta two, but I would expect more in the coming betas. Now, as far as the release notes go, you can see that Apple confirms that iOS 18.1 beta two is on track and in sync with iOS 18 beta six by saying to see the iOS 18 beta six release notes for additional details about new features, resolved issues, known issues and deprecations. And we do also have a few known issues that you need to know about. So we have one for mail where it says upgrading from 18 beta 5 to 18.1 beta might cause all mail to be redownloaded. And we still have the issue on the lock screen where you cannot invoke spotlight. So if you try to swipe down to invoke spotlight, it just simply does not work if you have that enabled. And that is a known issue with a workaround. Now, as far as the performance goes performance, I would actually expect this to be a bit better here on beta two. So with beta one, we were really on the same build essentially as iOS 18 beta four. So as you know, iOS 18 beta five and beta six had a nice jump in terms of performance. So I would expect performance to be a bit better here on beta two compared to beta one. Beta one wasn't terrible, but a lot of the AI features had a really, you know, a lot of issues visually and also with the smart reply and mail it just very rarely worked for me and now it works a lot more often and works better in beta 2 so performance definitely seems better now as far as battery life here's where I expect to see the biggest change so I know it's only one beta of a difference but if it's anything like what we've been having on iOS 18.0, the battery life will be a good bit better. So beta one battery life has been terrible for me. I have been using that on my main device here and battery life has not been great at all. So I'm really expecting battery life to see a nice jump with beta two. And I will confirm or deny whether we do or do not have better battery life in my Apple weekly episode on Saturday. But so far seems good. We're sitting right at 70%. Seems like we've been there for quite some time. Time. Okay, so now let's talk about what to expect next from Apple. So next up is going to be iOS 18.1 beta three, and I would expect Apple to still be on a two week release schedule for iOS 18.1. Now it's possible we could switch over to weekly if Apple is planning on having several beta updates. So we could see it next week or we could see it the following week. I think two weeks is more likely, but it's really close to 50 50 at this point. Who knows what Apple is going to do? with iOS 18.1 betas. So for beta three, again, either next week, the week of the 19th or the week of August 26th. That's when we should see that. And as far as public beta testers, if you are public beta testing iOS 18.1, you should see this update within 24 to 48 hours. And then of course, for the final release of iOS 18.1, we're not going to see that until sometime in October. So it's most likely going to be mid October, I would guess. So maybe the week of the seventh or the week of the 14th. It's really hard to say at this point. 
it really depends on the iPhone 16s as well and how quickly Apple wants to get 18.1 on those devices since they will have access to Apple intelligence. So iOS 18.1 beta 2 is a pretty big update just for the fact that we are now on track and kind of in sync with the iOS 18.0 betas. That means that we should be a lot more stable moving forward in terms of performance and battery life. And we should also not feel like we're way far behind the 18.0 beta updates in terms of features and changes. So that's good news. Not a ton. You know, I wish we had more for Apple intelligence. We didn't really get a ton of changes related to Apple intelligence in this beta, but I would expect more things to start popping up in later betas of 18.1 and of course moving forward throughout the next year or so but anyways if you enjoyed this video as always i would appreciate if you gave it a thumbs up also make sure to subscribe for more ios 18 and 18.1 coverage but anyways guys thanks again for watching and i'll see you soon